it's a pretty neat integration point between the document information panel in the client application and SharePoint as far as the metadata associated with the content type. Okay, so that's step one. Now the next thing I want to do is go a little bit further with content types and their document information panels. So going back to Word, let's say that I don't like the way that the document information panel is presented. You know, for instance, I don't really care about title, so I want to get rid of that. Uh, another thing is I might want to put some default values in place right here. You know, perhaps I want to have a drop-down list. So those are all things that I could do by taking the document information panel and creating a custom panel using InfoPath. So let's go ahead and close out of Word. I'm going to go back to Settings, and I'm going to go back to Document Library Settings. So I'm going to go and drill down on content types and Litware Memo, and I'm going to pick a link that says Document Information Panel Settings. So whenever I have a content type which is based on a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, or a PowerPoint slide deck, they can automatically build a document information panel from scratch and do it behind the scenes just by looking at the metadata. But in this case right here, I want to build my own and upload that. So that's used instead of the default one. Now if I created one from scratch, I could upload it. But there's a little trick I want to show you. And that is, I'm going to click on Create a New Custom Template. And when I click on this link right here, what's going to happen is Office is automatically going to build a new InfoPath form, which is the starting point. And it does it by binding the exact same controls that you saw with the one that comes from scratch. So in this demo right here, now that I have this, the first thing I'll do is I want to get rid of the control for title. It's a field I don't really care about. So I'll go delete that. Secondly, I'll go up and I'll change the background color to something that's more appealing. Now that we've done that, maybe another thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and choose to insert a picture and I have some clip art on this machine. And so if I choose to, not clip art, but what I want to do is I want to insert a picture from a file. And so if I go look on my machine under dev projects right here, I have a file that I'm going to go ahead and include. And maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger, but this is our Litware logo. You know, maybe I'll put it over here uh, on this side. Okay. And now that I've got that, this is what I want to do for the first draft. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take this InfoPath form and save it somewhere. I'm going to save it to my hard drive. So I'm going to go and find a place on my hard drive, and I'm just going to go ahead and save this as Litware Memo Panel. And now that I've saved it, I'm going to go ahead and publish it into the SharePoint site and publish it so that it's recognized as the content type document information panel for that specific document library. So if I come up here and I say File, and down from the File menu I choose Publish, a lot of what's going on allows InfoPath to recognize that this is a document information panel that I want to save back to a SharePoint content type. When I click Next, also note that it remembered where I created this InfoPath document library or uh, document information panel template from. And when I choose Publish, all my work's done right there. So now that we've done this work, let's go ahead and shut down InfoPath for a second. And when I do that, notice that it took that and it saved it back. Also note that when it saves it back, it saves it using a unique name. So it generates some unique identifier for the particular form and saves it back. Um, and so everything's done now to get my first test working. And I'm going to click off one more option for Always Show Document Information Panel on Document Open and Initial Saves of a Document Type. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now that we've done that, let's go back to our document library. And let's go ahead and open this document in our Office product. And now we see that our custom document information panel is being brought up. Okay, so let's go a little bit further. 
When you deal with a form designer like InfoPath, we have a lot more options. One of the things that I want to do here is I want to add some default values to some of these fields inside here, maybe put some formatted in place, maybe take company and provide a drop down list instead of making people type values into a text box. So let's go change. We're going to update the document information panel. And I'm going to go to settings. And I'm going to go to document library settings. And then I'm going to drill back down on the content type, litware memo. And I'm going to go to document information panel settings. Now this time it's going to be a lot easier than the first time I published because all I have to do is click on edit this template. If I click on edit this template, it automatically opens up. Now the things that I'd like to do, let's say for date, you know, maybe there's some basic formatting that I want to put in place. So I'll double click on this and InfoPath makes it pretty easy for me to take something like a date and say I want to format this a certain way. Maybe I want it to look in this particular format and don't display the, uh, the time, just put the date inside the box. You know, so there's an example of putting some formatted in place. Secondly, let's set some default values. So I'm going to go to the Tools menu, drop it down, and choose Default Values. When I do that, it brings up a little dialog that allows me to see the different fields that are part of my content type. And so this is all being preserved in an XML document behind the scenes. And also note that in addition to sender, sent, and audience, the three custom fields for my content type, they're also maintaining a set of other values. This is something that Word does in Excel and PowerPoint. We'll do the same thing. The, the different core properties are a little bit different between the two. But let's say that creator is what I care about. So what I'd like to do is when someone creates a new document, I want to take the sender field and I want to fill it in by using a value. So I'm going to say insert field or group. And I'll go up to core properties and I'll take creator. And I'll go ahead, choose creator. And that's going to be added back to sender. Now for sent, let's do something a little bit different. For sent, that's the day it's going to be sent. So I'll say insert function. And I'll go down to date and time and I'll pick the now function. So now I've set default values on both the sender and the sent control. Now finally, I'm going to use another neat productivity feature of InfoPath. And that is I can take something like a text box and I can change it over to some other control type. So let's change it over to a combo box. Now once I've changed it over to a combo box, let's make this a little bit wider. And I'm going to double click on the combo box. And when I do that, it brings up a dialog that lets me add some values in. So when someone decides what audience they want to send their memo to, it can be company-wide, or it can be to a more specific audience, such as the sales department or the human resources department. So I'll go ahead and I'll save my work back. And I'll go ahead and I will save the InfoPath form. And that automatically saved back to the site into the content type associated with the document library. And now let's go ahead and test our work. So we'll close out of InfoPath. We'll now move back to the site. And as a new user, your experience when clicking on this and pulling this up will be that it's going to bring this up. And notice that these values are automatically filled in. So Word was tracking who the creator was, so we automatically populated that into the sender. Secondly, it automatically added a default date, which the user is free to change to a different date. And there's also the ability for the user to come down here and select a particular audience. And once all that's done, the user can simply go back here, click Save, and save that work in place. So what we've seen right here is that the document information panel is a really neat integration point between Office desktop applications and content types inside of SharePoint. And without you doing any custom work, they automatically provide a document information panel that allows users to fill in the metadata right inside the Office desktop application. And then for more advanced usages, you've seen that it's possible to take the document information panel and customize it using InfoPath.